What are your dog's anal glands and why do they have them? Can these anal glands cause problems for your pet if they're not functioning properly? How do you know if your dog's anal glands are in proper working order? And the last question I will answer today about your pet's anal glands, should you, your vet, or your groomer manually express your dog's anal glands? Or could this prove to be harmful to your pet? Anal glands are really not glands at all. They're little sacs located right inside your dog's rectum at about four o'clock and eight o'clock, just inside the anus. These glands are sweat sacs that contain oil, sweat, and pheromones. Pheromones are chemical messengers that identify your pet to other animals. When another animal sniffs your dog's butt, they quickly get all the information explaining who they are and what is the status of their health, their age, their sex, and many other details. Think of it as viewing someone's profile on Facebook or Instagram. Because we are not dogs, we're merely humans, we're not 100% sure of the purpose anal glands serve. However, we believe anal glands definitely act as a natural form of identification for your dog, as well as the oil inside the anal glands acts as a natural lubricant that's released every time your dog has a bowel movement. One of the first noticeable signs that your dog's anal glands need cleaning is that he drags his rump across the ground. A buildup of fluid in the anal sacs can create pain, inflammation, itchiness, and your dog is scooting in effort to relieve the discomfort and to drain the glands. Again, when other dogs sniff your dog, the scent of the anal fluid identifies your pet's age, sex, their health, to the other dog. The glands serve other purposes too. According to the American Kennel Club, anal gland excretions may help your dog pass hard stools easier, as well as release pheromones, which dogs use as their territorial markers. In other words, the fluid that is excreted during your dog's bowel movements act as a natural lubricant and contains your dog's genetic unique scent. Some people speculate the anal glands are a leftover anatomical part from the ancestors of dogs and cats who used to defend themselves by spraying. That's right, just like a skunk. Releasing this foul scent when the animal feels threatened would prove to be a distraction to the predator, allowing the prey to possibly escape a life-threatening situation. Hmm, let's think about that for a second. Wouldn't the world be a much more pleasant place if we solved our problems with butt spray instead of weapons and other forms of violence, we certainly stand to learn a lot from the animals we share this earth with, don't we, my friends? There are two factors that can be a problem if your dog's anal glands are not functioning properly. Occasionally, impaction happens when there's a blockage in the duct that drains the sac out. This can lead to infection in the duct if it becomes blocked or inflammation. Are anal gland problems related to the sex of a dog, whether it's male or female? No, anal gland problems are more common in dogs than in cats, and they are much more likely to occur in small dog breeds than large dog breeds. Chronic or past problems with your dog's anal glands can lead to damaged or squished ducts. For example, prior infections, allergies, issues, stuff like that, complications can lead to chronic anal gland problems. Once anal sacs become impacted or infected, it causes pain and inflammation. And that's when you will notice your dog scooting and licking their rear ends obsessively. Even abscesses can form due to infected anal sacs that can rupture through the skin and drain. So what can we do if our beloved pets are having discomfort, impaction, or infection as a result of an anal gland problem? If your dog is having problems because of allergies, it's important to get the allergies under control. And that alone may correct the problem that they are experiencing with their anal glands. And in extreme cases, surgical removal of the anal glands is needed, but this is not common due to the possibility of future complications that your pet could suffer from for the rest of their lives. Oftentimes, your dog's anal sac issues stem from their diet. That's right. What goes in affects what comes out. Increasing the fiber in your pet's diet or adding a supplement to their meals can help create firm stool. That will press against the side of the colon. As it passes, it squeezes out the anal sacs naturally and that decreases the chance of impaction. Most vets recommend messing with your dog's anal glands as little as possible to avoid causing inflammation, irritation, and future anal gland issues. So if your dog is scooting across the carpet or constantly licking at their behind, 
make an appointment with your vet and have your pet properly examined by a professional who can provide the relief your dog needs. There is nothing pleasant about ruptured anal sacs and they are very fragile. So stop squeezing your dog's anal glands because you've been told by some speculating individual that this is something you should commonly and routinely do for your pet. And that includes pet groomers. Pet groomers are expected by pet owners to express your dog's anal glands every time they frequent the groomer. When the reality is this could be causing major problems for your dog's anal sacs and the future health of the anal sacs. This is what Dr. Karen Becker has to say on that subject. And the truth is, for millions of years, dogs and cats have existed with their anal glands with no problems. Adam in the Garden of Eden didn't squeeze his dog's butt. Cavemen in caves didn't um, put their cats up on rocks and express their anal glands. Dogs and cats have existed in harmony with their anal glands for quite some time. So the question is, those of you that have anal gland issues with your pets, what's going on? Because it can be a really recurrent, frustrating issue. What I'll share with you is not suspiciously in the 40s and 50s in grooming schools, groomers were taught to, out of service, clean the dog's ears, trim the dog's and cat's nails, brush the teeth, perform grooming, and then squeeze the anal glands. And, the, and emptying the anal sacs was considered to be kind of a courtesy. The downside is pets were never meant to have those anal glands recurrently expressed. And one of the main reasons pets have recurrent problems with their anal glands is unnecessary trauma. What we mean by that is this. If every single day I told you to wake up and squeeze your submandibular lymph nodes or glands to express them, you could end up having glandular trauma. Or, for instance, if I told you to squeeze your prodded salivary ducts every single time you needed to eat to squeeze your salivary glands, you could end up with soft tissue trauma. But most importantly, these two little tiny glands on either side of your pet's rectum have a tiny duct that leads out, and when animals poop, as the colon expands, as feces come through the rectum, as the colon expands, these glands squeeze a little bit of this really stinky material on the feces that provides biochemical markers for other animals. That's why when you're walking your dog, your dog insists on stopping to smell poo. What they're picking up on is that anal gland material that contains a lot of information about the dog that was there last. So all of that's meant to work in harmony. However, if that little duct that drains the anal gland becomes swollen closed, all heck can break loose in terms of your pets being really irritated, really inflamed, and those glands beginning to swell up and not have a porthole for that material to be able to secrete it, to be secreted. So what happens is groomers get in there and in an attempt to provide a service to you can actually create unnecessary trauma. Veterinarians can as well. So first and foremost, undue trauma is a major reason why animals have recurrent anal gland problems. And I would tell you that if your pets don't have anal glands right now, tell your vets and your groomers to please leave them alone. Do not automatically express anal glands. If your dogs and cats are having anal gland issues, I think it's really important to recognize this, that if there's an underlying inflammatory or infection that's our, an, an inflammatory response or low-grade infection that's already in the anal gland, sometimes gentle manipulation through a doctor that's capable of recognizing how much pressure to apply and when you need to stop squeezing is really important. But the goal is to help the anal gland retrain its muscle tone so that the body can do its job on its own. One of the biggest issues I see at Natural Pet, my practice, is that groomers have once a month, let's say, recurrently expressed anal glands, and what happens is the muscle around the anal gland that naturally has got good tone ends up losing muscle tone, and it's kind of like a balloon. When you buy a balloon, it's small and tight and perfect size, and when you blow it up and let the air out and blow it up and let the air out, eventually the balloon never goes back to its original taut, excellent, small size. And when the body becomes dependent on groomers or veterinarians expressing those anal glands, oftentimes muscle tone is lost and the body ends up not being able to do its job on its own. So if muscle tone is lost through recurrent expression, what we would encourage you to do is to have your veterinarian not automatically express the gland or even uh, the groomer, but their, your vet can check on a regular basis and determine, yes, the anal gland is normal size, it's not too full, the duct is working, and then you know what? Leave it alone. The second major reason why we can see recurrent anal gland issues is actually inf inflammation of the GI tract. And keep in mind the rectum and the anus are the very last part of the gastrointestinal tract. And any underlying disease or um, disease cascade that can influence the gastrointestinal tract can also influence the anal gland. So for instance, inflammatory bowel disease. 
if you've got inflammation of the colon, the anal glands can be affected. If you have allergies or allergic gastritis or allergic colitis, that can cause inflammation of the anal glands. And most importantly, anything that can cause soft stool, which are parasites, medications, antibiotics, um, anything that causes a recurrent soft stool is at great risk of causing anal gland issues because part of the effect of a healthy anal gland is based on firm stool. And when, when feces pass out of the rectum, it's the pressure of firm stool against the colon wall that effectively expresses the anal glands. And if your pet stools is, are recurrently soft or if they're having diarrhea, that's really a major metabolic reason why recurrent anal gland issues can become a problem. The underlying root cause is soft stool, which you must address. Why does my pet have not healthy stools? Firm, good, healthy stools can foster excellent anal gland tone, but you have to have healthy stools. So really, anal gland problems are the secondary symptom of an underlying bowel problem. So uh, remedying the underlying bowel problem is really important to get to the root cause of, of why an anal gland issue is there. I've linked the full video in the description of this video, guys. Please go watch that full video. It will explain very much to you about anal gland.